We explain the 1944 World Series. 1944 saw FDR win a fourth term in office and the invasion of France on D-Day. It saw the liberation of Leningrad, Paris, and Rome. It saw Operation Market Garden, the Battle of the Bulge, and the Pacific, the Battle of Lady Gulf, and the bombing raids on Tokyo. It also saw the first use of the V-2 rockets on London and Glenn Miller's disappearance. The GI Bill was signed to help soldiers transition home. Gandhi was released from prison, and prisoners launched the Great Escape from Stalag Luft Dry. There was the formation of the OSS and Frank's capture, the invention of sunscreen, and Gaslight and Bogeen Bacall lit up the screen. Smokey the Bear was created, Korematsu justified the internment, and Dumbarton created the future world order. Major League Baseball took a major hit in 44 with the stars off fighting the war. Many of the players who had played that season were those who had been given 4F status, or they worked in defense factories and could only play baseball on the weekends. Luke Sewell's St. Louis Browns were the best team in the American League, and they only had a combined average of 252, and only one player, Mike Krivich, was batting above 300. Two of their pitchers combined for only 36 wins, and Vern Stevens only had 109 runs and 20 home runs. Meanwhile, Billy Southworth's St. Louis Cardinals were taking their third National League pennant in a row and became the first NL team to win 300-game seasons with 105 wins. The series was played entirely in Sportsman's Park, which was the field both teams shared in 1944. It was nicknamed the St. Louis Showdown or the Trolley Series. Coincidentally, the movie Meet Me in St. Louis arrived a month later in theaters. The Cardinals were the heavy favorites, so the Browns decided to answer that favoritism with a Game 1 2-1 victory, complete with a two-run home run by George McQuinn in the fourth to put the Browns on top. It was the only home run the Browns ever hit in the World Series. Game 2 went 2-2 two two into the eighth when Cards reliever Blix Donnelly began pitching. He pitched into the 11th, allowing no runs, two hits, and seven strikeouts. Then Ken O'Day stepped up and pinched singles, giving the Cards a 3-2 win. The Browns put up a fight in Game 3 with a four-run third and Jack Kramer pitching a seven-hitter with ten strikeouts against multiple Cardinals pitchers to give the Browns a 6-2 win. Stan Musial opened up Game 4 with a two-run home run that would give the Cards a 5-1 victory against Sig Jakuki. In Game 5, the Cardinals outmatched the Browns with 22-game winner Mort Cooper against Galehouse and two home runs by Ray Sanders and Danny Litweiler to win 2-0. Game 6, Max Lanier and Ted Wilkes combined pitching with a three-run fourth to win the game and another Cardinals championship. This would be the Browns' last until they became the Orioles, coincidentally playing in Baltimore, whose Junior World Series had drawn a bigger attendance than the World Series.